Eternal Return 1.0 is almost released, and if you're new to the game, it can be a little overwhelming. I had a pretty rough learning process with Eternal Return, and with over 2,500 hours on the game, I can say that's because I didn't set myself up well. Here are 10 things I wish I knew before playing Eternal Return. Number 1. Where to find the best resources To find the best resources for Eternal Return, you'll need to look beyond the game itself. DAC and Aya.gg have been invaluable sources for players during the early access phase of Eternal Return. Check out the video in the card above for more details on these resources. Additionally, you'll want to explore various Eternal Return community discords. We have a main discord, a discord for social Socializing, a Discord that tells you when rank pops, a Discord for tournaments, and even a Discord that tells you what the best builds and augments are for each character. I'm currently in the process of making my own Discord, where I plan to have new player resources and tips and tricks for y'all. Stay tuned for that in the coming weeks. Number two, what counts as a win? While winning the game may seem like the ultimate goal, it's important to understand that a lot of players in the higher ranks consider gaining positive LP in ranked matches as a win. In normal matches where LP doesn't apply, any form of improvement should be celebrated as a win. Did you manage to complete your build early? than usual or secure a kill in a battle zone these small victories are crucial when starting out Number three, new player queue. And while we're talking about new players, understanding the concept of new player queue is vital. As you progress in Eternal Return, you'll notice a shift in gameplay, transitioning from consistent kills and wins to more challenging encounters. Initially, as a new player, the game will place you in bot lobbies, even if you queue for PvP matches. After securing a win in bots, you'll start to face other new players mixed in with those bots. Eventually, when you find yourself in lobbies consisting entirely of human players, you have exited the new player queue and entered the more competitive matches. While this can be challenging, it signifies your growth as a player. You can identify bots in your lobbies by their use of the Oblivion Can Wait augment, although this may change on release. Number four, learning the game on one character. The best way to learn Eternal Return is through one character. It's no secret that Eternal Return is a complex game. While the game offers a diverse cast, even characters with similar playstyles provide unique experiences. By consistently playing one character, you reduce the number of variables you have to learn, making it easier to retain information. If you're constantly having to learn mechanics of a new character while learning different variables of the game every single time that you play, you'll have a harder time improving. There's also no downside to one tricking a character in this game, especially not in the learning process where meta doesn't really matter. Number five, the time it takes to learn Eternal Return. Given the many variables in each game, it takes time and dedication to become good at Eternal Return. With over 2,500 hours in the game, I still only feel confident playing a handful of characters in the higher elos. Eternal Return is a grind that requires not only mechanical skill, but also a deep understanding of the game's unique mechanics. If you come from a similar MOBA game, you'll probably have a good grasp of the combat. However, learning how to adapt when missing an item in the zone, or strategizing in a multi-character final zone takes experience. Don't get discouraged by the slow progress, as improvement will come with time and practice. Number 6. Hunt Rotations as mentioned, Eternal Return has a lot of unique concepts, and one of those is hunt rotations. Hunts are a ways to get stronger. You'll gain weapon and hunt mastery from fighting them, and help you increase your overall level. After being taken, hunts have a cooldown which you probably know about, but this cooldown is rhythmic. Depending on when you take the hunt, you can expect it either at the same time the next day, or the day and a half later. While more comprehensive guides on hunts will be available in the future when hordes get introduced, Click the card above to see my mid-game guide to Eternal Return for general understanding of this mechanic. Number 7. Macro versus Mechanics While mechanical skill in outplaying your opponent is important, the macro game in Eternal Return holds greater significance. My mechanics on Razi are solid. They're good enough to outplay opponents, but they're nowhere near some of the top players in Eternal Return. What I am good at is making use of my time. Efficiently managing your time, moving around the map with purpose, and having a clear game plan are crucial steps you need to take every single game. Adaptability when things don't go according to plan is also equally important. Character meta becomes more relevant in the higher elo matches, but focusing on a solid game plan should be your primary concern when learning. Number 8. Alternate ways to gaining mastery In Eternal Return, mastery is gained through various means such as hunts, cooking, and skirmishing with other players. However, there are additional ways to accumulate mastery. When searching for transition components, craft together any redundant components you come across. This will slightly increase your crafting mastery. The impact is modest, only leading to half a level or a level at most. These little advancements will lead up to small advantages. Remember that trap mastery and health mastery will be removed in Eternal Return 1.0. Number 9. Defensive Transitioning As the game progresses and weapon mastery becomes your main source of damage, offensive items become less necessary. During the transition from purple to gold items, and even when replacing some gold items, prioritize high defense and utility-based transitions. In safe zones and final zones, where multiple players are present, you likely face any enemies targeting the same player, making health preservation crucial. You'll also need to keep yourself safe from third parties. Sacrificing offensive stats is a luxury reserved for those who are ahead. If you're behind in mastery, maintaining some offensive items will be essential. Number 10. All the free MP you can get Eternal Return offers numerous events that grant event MP, the currency you can use to purchase skins, emotes, and other cosmetics. 
The catch is that event MP has a time constraint on it compared to regular MP. While the quantity of events increased in Season 9, Nimble Neuron continues to be generous in distributing event MP. You can acquire them through events, drops from streamers, and the battle pass. Additionally, Eternal Return creators receive event MP codes worth 300 MP per month to give away, while partners receive 500. The free-to-play experience allows you to still obtain skins for your favorite characters, even if you have budgetary constraints. By following these 10 tips, you'll have a clearer understanding for Eternal Return and a solid foundation to excel in the game. Remember, learning the game takes time, so be patient and stay determined. I hope these 10 things can help you if you're a newer player to Eternal Return. If you're still thinking about picking up the game and need a swaying opinion, be sure to click or tap the screen now and check out my review of Eternal Return.